Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Amherst Traffic Safety Board meeting. Today is June 4th, 2023. 14th. What did I say? 14th. Sorry, June 14th, 2023. Um, first order of business is we'll just do introductions of ourselves. I am Eric Fraz, Chairman, and to my right, who will start today? Uh, Greg Dion, Vice Chairman. Kevin Cantwell, member. Mark Storch, member. Jennifer McNevich, member. John Smith, member. Bill Trenigo from the Building Department. Tom Boyd, Planning. Kevin Brown from the Police Department. Chris Schreigel from the Engineering Department, Traffic Safety Coordinator. Okay, so we have eight voting members here tonight. Okay. Hey, uh, well, there he is. And also with us this evening, we have Council Member Zucala making a grand entrance. Seven, eight. Okay. So we have eight members tonight, so we have the quorum necessary to proceed. Our next order of business is to just review the minutes from the May meeting. Um, anyone have any changes, comments to those minutes? I have a comment when Chris has them up. I can't pull it up, but I can just give it to you. Um, just so everyone is aware, we have some internet connectivity issues this evening, so we have limited resources. Great. Chris can't connect into his file, then. That's just like be verbal. Okay. Go ahead, Jennifer. Okay, I'll give it to everybody verbally, and then Chris, I'll hand it to you. Um, under new business item one, second line from the bottom, after 66 foot right of way, it should be a comma instead of a period. Got it. That's all I had. Oh, uh, you know what? That would have been a bifocal moment. Any other comments, changes? None being heard, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by me, second by Dan. Any further comments? None being heard, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes approved, 8-0. Okay, for those that are in the audience this evening, um, the one thing that I should have mentioned in the beginning is the emergency procedures of the building. Should the alarm go off, the emergency exits are to my left, your right, and you can exit to the front or rear of the building. Um, if there is any need for the use of the elevator, we ask that you not use the elevator. Assistance would be provided to you. Um, with that, the other order of business to bring before everybody's attention this evening, I'm not sure if anybody is here for it, but on the site plan portion, item D of the site plans, 54, 4548 and 4564 Main Street, 17 Fruhoff and 22 Chateau Terrace. That item will not be reviewed in tonight's agenda. It was on the agenda. However, this board serves as an advisory board to the planning board, town board, and other boards in the town. And the planning board has already met and taken action on that particular agenda item. So there's no further comment from this board needed by the planning board. So that item has been removed from the agenda. So if you're here for that particular item, I'm just letting you know here we start, as we start the meeting that that item will not be discussed. Um, with that, the next order of business, so that you are aware, this board is not a lawmaking board. We are an advisory board to the town board, the planning board, and other town boards in the other boards and committees within the town. Um, so as we go through your agenda items tonight, any items um, that require further action will be sent over to Council Member Zucala if it requires action from the town board, or we do have the department liaisons here that can work on some of the items that don't require any legal action or motions from the town board. As we go through your agenda evenings, agenda items through the course of this evening, we will advise you of the next steps in the process. Also, with regard to the agenda this evening, we do not go in the order of the agenda. For those that are here in the audience tonight, we will go in the order that you have signed in. Um, so we'll address agenda item number five first and then agenda item number two based on those that are signed in. Um, other than that, if you are to speak tonight, we will call you up to the podium up here. We ask that you come up to the podium, state your name and address so that we can pick that up for our minutes. 
Um, and then you will have three minutes to speak at about two and a half minutes. We don't have a lot of speakers this evening. Um, we'll advise you that you got about 30 seconds left um, to let you wrap things up. All of us up here on this board have been provided a nice thick packet of paper. Um, so any correspondence that you have had with the town prior to this meeting, we have copy of that correspondence. So while you're up there for three minutes, no need to repeat all the information that you've already shared with the town. We already have that. Um, with that, we will move to item number five on the agenda this evening, uh, which is Willow Green Drive request for an always stop sign. And I'll turn it over to Chris at this point for the background information. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, members of the Traffic Safety Board uh, and members of the public. The fifth item tonight is in reference to uh, the Willow Ridge area, specifically uh, Willow Green Drive at the intersection of Bedford. For those of you who are not familiar, behind the uh, school, I believe that's Willow Ridge School, there is a town park. Um, this is Bedford on the screen. And this is a municipal park with the tennis courts, as well as uh, a playground, some t picnic tables, and, and some open space. Um, the resident has reached out to the town, and they're specifically um, concerned about speeds on that roadway, uh, and is asking for that intersection, which is currently signed as a single way stop, stopping Bedford traffic westbound, to be converted to an all way stop. Uh, if they're unable to do that, then the, they're asking for consideration of a cross traffic does not stop sign uh, placed underneath the stop sign at Bedford. Uh, furthermore, they've also asked that uh, there's for a uh, playground sign to be posted on the roadway to give notice to drivers that there is a playground in the vicinity. Uh, this is a local roadway, all residential. There are sidewalks. Um, there is a number of duplexes in the area, uh, and uh, oh, you know what's new? We did get some counts. So not in your package because we just got these this week. We do have some counts. We placed it at 227, which is just south of that intersection. And if you refer to the screen, this is your typical chart. Uh, for the members of the public, this is what we look at when we analyze the speeds and volume. This is going northbound. Um, we can see the range of speeds, uh, primarily the, the largest uh, value of 36 vehicles are traveling between 26 and 30. In the northbound direction, there's 110 vehicles traveling per day. And a, a speed that we normally look at and traffic engineers nationwide look at is the 85th percentile speed and for this particular direction, it's 32 miles per hour. This two right here, greater than 65, it is difficult for us to know if that is just an anomaly or a malfunction, or if somebody was actually going over 65 on that roadway. Uh, southbound, we had that same two pop up, so it makes me wonder if that was just a, a malfunction, but um, in the southbound direction, we have 130 vehicles, and that 85th percentile speed is 33 miles per hour. The roadway is posted at 30 miles per hour. Then you look at the volume. I'm going to zoom in here because I can't see it. 240 vehicles per day, not a tremendous amount. Uh, scattered all over the place, not even really a, a good peak in the AM or PM. If you were to add police enforcement, you might want to target that four, three o'clock or four o'clock hour as that seems to be the highest uh, rate of speed collected over 40 miles per hour. That concludes the information specific to speeds. And uh, in your package, we had a, I don't know why that's not popping up. Oh, spe specific to uh, crashes at that intersection, we've had a zero crash history at least recorded in the last five years at that specific intersection. And with that, I'll turn it over to the board. With that, we have, we'll open up the public comment period and we have Sal Guadagna. Yeah. Hello, 
Um, I live at, uh, my name is Sal Guadagna. I live at 269 Willow Green Drive, which is on the corner, basically the second house in, northbound side of Bedford Court. And uh, I've lived there for 20 some odd years, and I know the pattern of traffic fairly well. And that 65 mile an hour blip may probably is, but still there are some people who really do push the envelope on that back edge of Willow Green. Um, I've seen it where they're in excess of 40, close, maybe closing in on 45, 50 miles an hour. That's not an exaggeration. I think fit 65 is probably something's wrong. I had a question about where that measure was, where was the wire put for measuring that? That those beads? Sure. Light pole 227. What address would that be? Uh, it's 227 Willow Green. So I'll try to pull that up. So that's south of me, right? 269. That would be going toward Willow Ridge, right? So it's showing up on the map now. Uh, when we do these, we try to make sure it's like mid block. We don't yeah, want to put it. That's a good spot. We don't want to put it near an intersection because that would obviously, you know, we'd get to we'd collect the turns off of Bedford. We don't want to do that. So no, that's. I think that's a reasonable spot to collect that data. Um, so what's at issue tonight is putting an always stop on the corner of Bedford Court and Willow Green. I think that's a good uh, um, recommendation. Uh, the, the, the speeds need to be broken up. That circle's uninterrupted and um, the speeds get very, very, you know, very high on the back edge and I could actually you know, parenthetically say, I think 30 miles an hour is high in that neighborhood. I think, and I, I have become, you know, I don't know when I became my old man, my father, but I think 25 is ample speed. And when I see some of these, even at 30 miles an hour, there is a lot, there are a lot of kids in this neighborhood. And I think it would be real, the people would be hard pressed to stop at 30. Um, but I think, you know, honestly, uh, an all-way stop there would be warranted absolutely if if and also i i propose if we we need to have speed bumps they do it in buffalo and i'm not a i'm not a big fan of speed bumps because i have multiple trailers and that would make my life miserable hauling trailers but i think something needs to be done not only in willow ridge but throughout the neighborhoods in in uh, amherst i know the speed is a, is a problem and my daughter lives in uh, Ron buff state off of elmwood avenue and they use and I think they're in Allentown, the speed bumps. So I, pr I say to you that if they can do it in Buffalo where plowing is a, vi a big challenge to say the least, I think that we can probably handle it in Willow Ridge. And if we can't re uh, deal with it in the winter time, maybe we could uh, uh, engineer something that, you know, the bumps can be taken out seasonally so that they're not an issue plowing wise. I, I understand that too. I also plow, I know how it could get in the way of the plow. Um, so that takes care of Willow Green, that I, where I live, where I have intimate knowledge. I also have intimate knowledge other places in Willow Ridge. And the other one is Edgewater. I know that might not be on the agenda, but Edgewater is a through, it's a thoroughfare, and there's a cross street, if you could find it. Edgewater and Kmar. That's an also from, I went to the last Willow Ridge meeting and that was seemed to be at issue where traffic goes through Edgewater un, uninterrupted and Kmart has to stop. You know, it's just that it, it, there's so many, there, there are no um, places other than that. I, I, I think that's the only one I can think of in that neighborhood. Be, and because that's sort of the anomaly, people don't think that there's through traffic. And I know I've been sort of like, I have to think about it. Oh shit, oh, excuse me. Oh, I have to stop here. This is Kmart. Oh, traffic goes through here, sorry. So I think that might be warranted also to think about if we could put that on. I would, be, I would love to be the liaison for traffic. I think traffic's really important. Um, that's another me going tangential here, but what, what else? What do you think? 
I mean, can I ask you? I mean, I probably not. Okay, so, so if you're finished, we'll. Well, the Bedford Court thing is the big thing, okay. but Edgewater is also on my mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you want to stay up here in the front row instead of going back to your seat, we may have some questions like for you. Um, with that, is there anyone else here to speak on this item this evening? None being heard or seen, we will close the public comment period for item number five and open it up here to the board for further discussion. All right, I'll start. Um, so just some of the things that you had mentioned that you were talking about here to make you aware. Um, the stop signs themselves, stop signs are actually traffic control devices. They're not speed control devices. So a stop sign is used in order to control the intersection, not to control the speed. There's been numerous studies that have been done that if you basically install stop signs where they're not warranted, you can actually cause an increase in speed. Because what happens is people turn around and they realize that the stop sign is there, they get frustrated that they have to stop for it, and then they speed up after the fact to make up for their lost time of having to come to a nuisance intersection where there is a stop sign that's not warranted. In addition to that, if you put stop signs that are not warranted in places, um, especially low volume streets, the people that are driving those streets most frequently are the residents of those streets. Those residents in turn know that there is normally not much traffic coming through those cross streets because they drive through them at least daily if not multiple times per day. So they in turn don't bother to stop for those stop signs. We have numerous complaints in the town of people not stopping for stop signs. We have video files of people running stop signs that have been made and basically that's what happens when you put in stop signs that are not warranted. People just don't stop for them and they become a bigger um, safety issue because the pedestrian sees that stop sign there and they believe that the car is going to stop for the stop sign. And in turn, the pedestrian starts to walk and that's where you run into other accidents as well. So one thing to consider about that is there are warrants that need to be met from the MUTCD that we follow here um, before stop signs are placed. And I can tell you, I'm not sure of the exact counts that would be needed on your street, um, but with a total traffic count on the busiest leg of the road being 110 vehicles per day, I think was the number that I saw on that count there, Chris. Yes. Um, you're not going to meet the warrants because I believe it's somewhere in the ballpark of 300 on the major and- Yeah, you need, you need per the book, you need 300 vehicles per hour on the major leg, which would be the Willow Green. Entering volume from both sides. And then in addition, in addition to that, there are other things that can be done, which is why Chris pulled up the information about the crash history at the, at the intersection. Since there is no crash accident history at the intersection for the last five years, um, that piece is taken into account as well. So if there was a high crash accident history at the intersection, if there's sight line distance issues at the intersection, those are other considerations that can be taken. So at this intersection, from what we can see there, based on the traffic counts themselves, no crash history and the configuration of that intersection, there's no warrant for the installation of an always stop sign. What about the on the Kmart side? On Willow Park, Lake there are numerous, there are numerous, there are numerous intersections. There so, are numerous intersections that exist within the town that are always stop signs that are not warranted that were not installed correctly so when the developers Eric, built those neighborhoods. Eric, the um, just give you a little history. That's Black Spruce. Yeah, there's an there's an unwarranted stop sign that that a resident pushed and ultimately got approved, uh, that this board was against. And for years, this board uh, it, it preceded a lot of you folks on the board, but a lot of you, uh, the, the, the boards would commonly look at this intersection and say, this is, this is the, the wrong way to point the sign, put a sign in. And we had residents come and actually write us saying, nobody's stopping at that intersection. Why is there a stop sign? So, um, uh, no, it took, took some time. But if you were to go out there, and just sit there and count the number of non-compliant stops, it's, it's off the charts. Okay. I, I think it's...
Correct, but the but correct, but but as there are guidelines that are set in order to install a stop sign. Okay. All right. So basically, the the warrants for this board to make a recommendation to the town board for the installation of the stop sign are not warranted. So that is basically I mean, we 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 don't have we don't have a reason to okay. make a recommendation for the installation of a stop sign at this point. But that, but that will, we will, that is not correct. It is not a reactive situation because you need to have a series of accidents, repetitive accidents. There are guidelines that are set through the MUTCD that set the guidelines for the actions to be taken. If we, I don't want to argue with you on the situation, but we we have re, we have we have re, we have residents that are before this all the time. We have stop sign requests that come on to this meeting every time. If we put a stop sign up for every resident that wanted a stop sign installed, we would have a stop, we would have a four-way stop sign at every single intersection in the town. And there'd still be accidents and that, because- And we would still have people asking for more stop signs and then we'd have everybody in here complaining about people running stop signs because that's the next thing that we get when we put in the stop signs is the lack of enforcement. And then we're asking for Captain Brown and the police department to be there to enforce people stopping at the stop signs. So there's a balance that needs to be made there in order to have the safety where you put the stop signs in the correct places based on the traffic counts that are there in order to control that intersection. So those are the guidelines that we are working to follow based on the guidelines that have been set for us in order to make that happen. I hear your complaint. I don't need to be hostile or anything like yep, that. It but just seems like, you know, I live there, I see the issues, I'm like, I understand that. I would rather prevent something from happening. Yep, so I bring this up, I bring this issue up all the time. In your situation, there's actually guidelines that exist within the MUTCD as well, that based on the traffic counts that are on your street, and this is taken in some towns throughout New York State because it is allowed, you could remove all the stop signs at that intersection and, and have no stop signs, have no traffic control devices. It sounds counterintuitive, but when you do that, nobody knows what will happen at that intersection. The people that drive there are then more cautious and that actually is a way to help control and reduce speeds as well. It's, like I said, it sounds counterintuitive. It's not an action that this town takes. Um, we do have some towns, we do have some spots in the town where we do have lack of the traffic control devices um, because of the configurations of the intersection and it actually does work. When it comes to the installation of the speed bumps, um, item number three on our agenda tonight is actually for Westfield Road, um, which will be the first town within, the first road within the town of Amherst where the speed humps are going to be installed this summer based on a project that's being done. Um, with the installation of those speed humps, there's, we're still working on that ourselves as to what those guidelines are um, but you can look at some of the reports that are out there in the media of the streets in the city of Buffalo of residents that have the speed bumps and they do not like them. It's the nuisance that they create. So there needs to be a balance when those speed bumps are put in that the residents that live on those streets actually want them and that there is enough people asking for them that it's not just one resident asking for them. Um, they have proven in areas to be effective so that's why we are taking those actions. Um, but I will also say that based on some of the conversations that we've had on this board as to where they would go in. This street would not meet the criteria for the speed bumps because of the low traffic counts that are there and looking at the speeds on your street with an 85th percentile speed at 32 miles per hour, the speeds on your street are really not excessive um, compared to what we're seeing on the other streets where we are looking at the speed humps as an action. So yeah. there needs to be a balance as to where you put them. You, again, you can't put them on every single street. So within the town of Amherst, the speed the town wide speed limit is 30 miles per hour. Um, there was New York State guidance that based on the size of our town, that was the lowest speed that we could go. There has been new laws passed within the state of New York that could allow the town to take action. Chris, we can take that on individual streets or a town wide initiative to reduce that speed limit if we see that as correct. Or if we see that as an option, correct? Uh, yes, we are still looking into whether or not what it takes to go to a 25 mile per hour speed limit. Um, that, uh, what you said, I just want to speak to something really quickly because what you said was very interesting. Buffalo is the difference between the residents who can't live and whether or not they like them. And liking them and the effectiveness of something are really two different things. I do not like something, but I feel like it's still seeming effective. That is a speed control. 
that. So there, so there is, so what I will say to that is that there's actually, I believe it was on Channel 2 News' website of residents being interviewed on the streets that do have the speed bumps. It's a concern that is addressed that you can look up about them. Remember every time a car hits that speed bump. Remember every time a car hits that speed hump on the street that that car creates a vibration. So the biggest complainers of the people on those streets are the people whose house sit in directly in line with those speed bumps because they feel a vibration or hear a thump, 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 thump every time a car goes over that speed bump and drives down that street. I so there are other things to take into consideration when you speed those, you're addressing, you're addressing a traffic concern by putting that speed hump in there, but you do create other challenges that come with that. The other problem that you have when you install that speed hump on a street, which is why you see the city of Buffalo now installing more and more of them, is you cannot just install them on one street because if you install them on one street, people then go to the next street over. Now you double cars on that street, so now you start putting them on that street. So you, you start compounding the problem because people start to avoid the street with the speed hump and you create a problem on another street. So you can't just go and put a speed hump on one street and expect that that's going to resolve the problem. So that's why there needs to be a strategic approach um, from the town and different committees and different groups as to when those are placed. So and, and another point, and another point, emergency vehicles are hampered by the speed bumps as well. I mean, if someone's dying down that street and the ambulance has got to go, ba-dum, 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 at 15 miles an hour, ba-dum, and they could be going, uh, that person could be dying. The speed bumps go, they're probably The speed, the speed, the, the, but the, the emergency vehicle needs to slow down for that speed bump more than a regular vehicle needs to. It's a, a fire truck needs to almost come to a complete stop to go over every single one of those speed humps. So with that, Council Member Zucala, you had a... Um, so with that, um, we do have that issue as well. The question that I'll bring up to the board, um, the request for the cross traffic does not stop. Um, any comments from other members on the board and thoughts as to the placement of that sign in that vicinity? I would not be opposed to the placement of that sign and I wouldn't be opposed to the placement of the park sign either if... I was gonna bring that one up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so that's fine. I'm a, fan of, I'm a fan of the cross traffic does not stop sign. We did that on that one street in Haggardsville. Um, yeah, I think it was Maynard. That, that, that's a good indicator that the cross traffic doesn't stop. Hey, they're not going to stop. Beware. And that, and that goes a long way, too. I'm in favor of the uh, cross traffic does not stop. Any other comments in regard to that sign? I'll go out on a limb and I will say that based on other conversations we've had in regards to the placement of that sign, I would not be in favor of that sign. Again, because we do not have an accident history. There is no accident history at that intersection. Every other intersection where we've placed that sign in the town, um, it's been because there is an accident history at that intersection. And I, as we've talked about other times on this board that we don't want to have place signs just for the sake of placing signs. There's a reason that sign exists. I'm not, seeing, I'm not seeing the reasoning at this point for the placement of that sign. I'm one person. I'm, there are, there are Chairman, eight people up here tonight. As well. I'm, I'm one person. Yeah. 
playground, that's going to bring in more people. That uh, we've got more picnic tables in that area, so we're going to get more and more traffic. That would, in my opinion, make it warrant at least um, this, the through traffic does not stop. I mean, I don't see where this is getting so. So we understand. I, as I stated. Understand your concerns, understand your comments. We're gonna talk about this further here as the board now at this point. I'm one person on the board stating my opinions as you are as well. So, Jennifer, I believe you were. Yeah, I agree with you, Chairman. The cross traffic does not stop. We try to use signs in an appropriate location and without the accident history, I, I can't support it because it, it would cause drivers to think that there's a potential issue there. And while I understand that there's a concern about um, traffic going into the park, there's not a demonstrated reason, in my opinion, to, to put it in. I, I have a question for Chris. Uh, Chris, we have a park here and a school. Can we reduce the speed because of them? Are we too far away? No, we're too far away. Okay. So it's based on property lines of the school, and we've already established a uh, school zone, I believe, in this area because the frontage comes out at this street. There is no frontage on Willow Green that I'm aware of. Um, so no, we can't establish a school zone on that street in that area. Even though we have a school crosswalk. Uh, Sir, where's the school crosswalk in vicinity of Bedford? Oh, right here? Right there, that's the crosswalk. That's a, that's a, you see where that, that sidewalk ends? That, that's a, that's a, a well, traffic I don't crosswalk. see it. I don't see it. It's not. Because it's not a, it's not a crosswalk. It's not a crosswalk. So, I'm sure they do. So yeah, there's a there's cr there's a criteria for establishing a school zone, and that's that's not meeting it. It's got to have a crosswalk. It's got, yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question, Dan? And we're too far at the park. Too far away at the park, also. There is no. The park uh, I think it's here, but it, again, it has to front on the road. This is a private parking lot. So that's not a public road. So are we specifically talking about the cross traffic does not stop right now? Yeah, Chairman? we're talking cross, cross traffic does not stop. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, there is not a motion at this point for the installation of that sign. Is there any member that would like to make that motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion. There's a motion from Greg for the installation of the cross traffic cross traffic does not stop sign is there a second I'll second and there's a second from Dan any further conversations based on this agenda item and what we've had here so far we'll do a roll call vote um, Max uh, yes, I sure. Mark no. yes yes no yes no. No. It's a 4-4. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a 4-4 four, four tie is, is, is not, a, not an approval. So with that, we have a 4-4. Four, four. As Chris stated, a 4-4 four, four is not an approval. So that will not move forward at this point for the installation of that sign. Um, the other request that we had was for the advanced playground sign to be placed on Willow Green. Um, I will make a motion for the installation of those signs in the appropriate locations on Willow Green. Is there a second? Second. Motion from me, a second from Greg. Any further conversation on placement of those signs? None being heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried for the installation of the advanced playground signs, eight to zero. All right. Kill that one, man. Any further conversations on this topic? 
None being. Uh, yeah, I've got one. It, should there be any consideration or discussion about a mid-block crosswalk uncontrolled and establishment of a, a new ramp? I'm just throwing it out there for discussion. An establishment of a what? Uh, an uncontrolled crosswalk. So a mid-block crosswalk, essentially, with a ramp. Uh, I don't think you could do one here. It's pretty close to that driveway. Um, I don't know if people are crossing here. We could always do a PED study, but just wanted to have a discussion on it. Well, that could, you could, could that be inviting unsafe conditions then? You'd have to sign it appropriately. Um, I, you know, if they're crossing there already, it would provide a level of protection. Um, it's allowed to do uncontrolled crosswalks, but you know, I'm not, I'm not for it or against it. I just wanted to have the discussion. Should we maybe get a pedestrian cross with the number of people actually crossing? If we were to do the pedestrian count for the number of people crossing, I would want to wait till the new playground is installed because I'm not thoroughly convinced based on where this park is located with the installation of the playground that it's going to cre increase vehicular traffic as much as potential, pod potentially pedestrian traffic from the residents in there walking to the park to use the playground because it seems to be a pretty heavily residential park for that neighborhood more than a people driving to that park. When is the, when is the playground due to be installed? He said, he said like later this year. <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. All right. Chris, can you zoom out? Is there pedestrian access on the east side of the park as well? Yes. Uh, there's a connection here, and there's also a connection here, although it's not, there's no pathway connecting it. People do casually walk through the park. Uh, we have explored connecting the trailway. Um, but there was some opposition by the homeowners association for that. Uh, so at this point, there is no uh, discussion on, on making that connection. So those are the three access points. Down here, I, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, you can access it from the school. If we were to explore putting a crosswalk at that intersection with a landing, I would say we'd probably want to look at is that Kmar on the other side that loops around there. This one? That one there as well. Yeah. As long as you've got sight distance. I mean, it's next to a curve. I'd want to look at that. That might be subtle enough where you could meet the sight distance requirements. And what about that bend in the road where he said that school kids are crossing? Just they're crossing anyway. Um, what's, down, your, down, what's, down your, what's your question? Could we put a crosswalk down there? The kids uh, are crossing anyway. Not recommend a crosswalk there. OK. Not on the curve. I'm not sure it's a good idea either, but if they curve. are, they are. Yeah, but not on the curve. You don't want to encourage well, I know it. No, you don't, but that's where they're crossing. I mean, if I were, no, I'm not going to say There's that. One right there, anyway. Yeah, I know there is. I'm not opposed to exploring it for park safety. So do you want to um, just Hold this out until after the playground is done. Maybe do an immediate pedestrian study afterwards and see if there's yeah potential. I think that if we All can right. find out when that is installed and then within first couple of weeks of that park playground being installed, do the counts then. You'll probably have pretty good counts at that point if it's new. That's all I have, Chairman. Okay, thank you. We'll close item number five. Uh, next item that we have people signed in for this evening is item number two, which is Hampton Hill Drive, pedestrian safety and speed concern. Turn it over to Chris for additional background information. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Hampton Hill Drive, try to pull it up on the map. is adjacent to Brompton, I believe. Yes. It runs, it's a north-south road. It is uh, 
all residential. It runs between um, Sheridan and Main Street. Uh, it is currently posted at 30 miles per hour. It has a 28 foot wide pavement. It is, um, like I said, residential, but there's a lot of seniors living in that neighborhood. Uh, it was designed intentionally with curves within the roadway to try to slow down vehicles. Um, it was not planned to have sidewalks, and that is why it does not have sidewalks. The resident who reached out to the town uh, points out pedestrian safety, uh, asking for better enforcement of the speed limit, perhaps better signage to slow vehicles. Uh, really, they're trying to attempt to uh, minimize the amount of conflicts between vehicular and pedestrian slash uh, bicyclists, people with dogs, bikers, etc., elderly couples walking for entertainment and exercise. Um, in part of your package, you have a speed count. Uh, this was placed mid block, similar to last item. Uh, we've got a total number of vehicles of just over 1,000. Uh, the 85th percentile speed is 28 miles per hour in the direction is that northbound. And you've got a 85th percentile of 30 on the southbound. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any other information. In terms of crashes, uh, I did not pull up uh, accident history specific to vehicular, but in terms of pedestrian and bicycle accidents, there are none on record, at least between 2017 and 2021. Uh, if you look at the town sidewalk map, you can tell it is a void area of sidewalks, and there are sidewalks to the north and to the south on the state highways of Maine and Sheridan. There it is. With that, I'll turn it over to the board for discussion. With that, we'll open public comment period because we have two residents that are signed in this evening. You're both marked as not wanting to speak. Um, if either of you have changed your mind, you're more than welcome to come up and speak. Okay? Okay. So with that, we'll close the public comment period and open up to the board here for further discussion and questions. I'm sure you have comments on this one. So, Chris, you said that this was designed explicitly to have no sidewalks? It was not required at the time. I don't think, uh, Tom, I don't know if you know the history, but it was not, sidewalks were not required at the time of build. Okay. So they weren't explicitly ignored, they just weren't included because they didn't have to be. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there was a purposeful intent not to have sidewalks. It just wasn't required. I don't know. We, we've seen this road before. So and and just another statement off that it would be very difficult to install sidewalks at this time, given the topography, as well as the uh, number of obstructions, trees, etc., uh, that are now within the right of way. I'll just make note here that I think majority of residents would be very happy with the speed counts being at 30 miles per hour and 28. The speed is really not, in the views of this board, an issue um, from the standpoint of where it sits under the speed limit. I think the bigger concern here is just pedestrian safety on the street because of the lack of sidewalks. And there is a really good amount of traffic on the street. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a good point, Chairman. If you compare this to Brompton, which is the north side, north-south roadway, that 85th percentile speed was 39. Uh, and that's a straight, straightaway road. I'm sure it's used more heavily due to the um, non-curving geometry. 
and here you've got much different at 30 miles per hour. So I think the curvature is working. It's less appealing. There are center islands, center a couple choke downs, you know, um, that make it uncomfortable to speed through there. So you know, whatever they did did help with the speed when you compare it to Brompton next door. Right. I was going to make the same comment there that the center islands that were put in there with the design, with the curves of the road for speed control, um, this is a perfect example of it working to slow down that traffic. When you can look at this street the way that it's designed with the curves in it, with the center islands, and then compare it to Brompton, which is one street over, which is a straight chute connecting the two streets, and you see the vast difference in the speed counts and where the traffic is moving to in order to connect those two streets, to be the cut through to connecting Sheridan Drive and Maple, um, or I'm sorry, Main Street and Sheridan Drive. I, I recall, Chairman, a couple of months ago, maybe it was more than a couple, residents on Brompton coming in with the same issue and us citing this roadway as a, an example of how to do things right. right, right. <laughs> I mean, it's, there's the, a, the only missing piece about doing it right is that you would have the sidewalks, sidewalks yes. along with the curves and the center islands. That's the missing piece on the street is the, the sidewalk, which at this point is a, not a realistic or feasible um, move. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've had occasion to uh, to be in this neighborhood uh, uh, actually quite a bit in the last couple of weeks, uh, trips to Lowe's or... Uh, One of those cars. Right. On the count. Got it. And, and other reasons. And <laughs> speed is not a problem because you, you really can't speed very much of this road and the numbers, the numbers uh, bear that out. But one of the things that I noticed is you can't see pedestrians until you're right on top of them. Because of the, because of the curves and sight distance, you just don't see them. I I'm, agree with you. I've been on the street myself um, and seen pedestrians on the seat and you, they do kind of pop up on you. That's where we make the comment that that's where the one missing piece here is the sidewalk. But how do we solve for that at this point? Um, Chris, I believe the street itself is 28 feet wide. Right. With, which is the town standard. Um, the reason I bring that up is would there be an opportunity to paint fog lines on the street that would choke down the street a little bit, um, create kind of a shoulder on the street for the pedestrians? I'm just not sure there's enough room to do that. And then how would you put those fog lines in going around those choke points where the road already has the center island because that takes up the center space of the, of the road? This is what I suggested a couple of years ago when this road was on the agenda. Yeah, I believe it's, it might have been, if it wasn't in our notes, I believe that has been discussed in the past. And it's the same concern. The width of the road, the space that you would need to do it on both sides, but then if you, that's a great straight line, Chris. Um, That'll slow them down more. I don't know how to. What's going on with the switch part of this fog line? <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. So that would leave, if you did if 28 feet wide, you could have two lanes of 10. So that takes away 20. Uh, and then that would remain a four and four shoulder. Uh, you could not sign it or do any pavement markings to say pedestrians or bicycles, but it may provide relief to walkers in the area by trying to get that, you know, the vehicles to drive more to the middle centered of the road. in the middle. But what we don't know on that is it would take further design work and study if you were to do it. Do you have the road width where the choke points are? You'd have to fade it into zero, so which you, is then you could narrow it in that section. Uh, might be more uncomfortable to drive. Um, but again, if you don't specifically say it's for peds or bikes, you, you can really play around with the widths of a, of a shoulder. And I don't know if anyone's parking in the uh, roadway, but you know, you'd have to make sure um, you know it's not <laughs> it doesn't turn into a, a uh, a narrow parking lane that is inadequate, inadequately sized. Yeah, 
that. Traffic doesn't speed by those those uh, trucks, does it? Let me, let me rephrase my question. Does the traffic slow down when there's a landscaper's truck there? Most of them do. I'm Eileen Leary. I live at 73 Hampton Hill Drive. And I'd say the majority do because they do live there. But there is a part when people come up from Sheridan Drive, um, they come up the hill, and sometimes they're, it's usually during the commute time, before 8, after 4, that they come out of a, like a bed out of hell, and there's a curve there. And then they cut over into the other lane, you know, so you're coming down the street and you're, you know, you got to move over because they're in your lane. So I agree with your studies. Obviously, you're, they're your studies and it does make sense. But there are at times when people are just driving like, um, I think it was when Morano built next to us, people have to cut through if they want to go over to Main Street, they kind of make a right, then another right, and then up to Hampton Hill. And that's just my opinion. L as little as it is. The ones that are going fast are fast. Hi, Susan Herzog, 65 Hampton Hill. Um, I'm a frequent dog walker, and I am a frequent dodger of cars that I think are going an inappropriate speed. But but I, I really appreciate the study because it shows that the speed is is really not a problem, except for the four at 65. Maybe it was a bug. Maybe it was real. But um, no, I, I actually will take that back to my own neighbors to say you guys took the time, you put the you put the uh, box on the on the pole, and you're not seeing horrible speeds there. You're seeing some, um, but I'm the one that's yelling at them to slow down. They ignore me, or give me one finger salute, but I'm going to still do it. <laughs> Haven't yeah. gotten hit yet. Yeah, um, when you see that 16 to 20 spike up that like that, that's that's a really a good sign. And that 16 that to 20 time. mile per hour being that highest number there is what yeah. Chris is saying. The 20, 16 to 20 miles 16 per hour? 16 to 20 miles per hour is the highest count at most, the I highest count. I would like count. to say that those are the residents, not the people passing through. Which is probably the case. To be honest with you, but um, no, I, I really appreciate it. And you know, the, the numbers can't lie. Well, so. you said something interesting. You said that the cars are driving in the wrong lane when they, when they come to those medians. Yeah, but not by the medians. When they come up um, from Sheridan Drive, there's a curve right around the 40s or so. So they're coming up in at the top of the hill. Top of the hill. It's going to curve over to the left. So they're, they're, they're over in the, the uh, opposite lane. So a couple of times I have caught them you know, on the wrong side. Not completely, but when you have three quarters <coughs> of their car in your lane. The map, the map up there doesn't show when you drive up that street, the amount of incline that yeah, there is coming up from Sheridan. So you come up that hill, you can't see, you hit that curve, and that's where they're it's the same hill as like Brompton. getting a good speed going up the hill, and then they hit that turn and they they cross to the other side of the road going around that first bend. They absolutely do. They can maintain their speed if they cross to the other side of the road because it lets them go straight and ignore the curve. That absolutely does happen. And I, um, you had asked a question about uh, going on the other side of the median. Um, very often the pedestrians walk against traffic and I actually appreciate it if someone's coming toward me in my lane and sees there's no traffic behind me and does go on the other side of the median. It always gets a wave out of everybody that um, you know, has that. I, I realize as traffic guys you don't love that solution, but if there's no other traffic on the street, as a walker I appreciate that I don't have to jump up on the curb with my dogs. They respectfully go to the other side. I also would like to see a couple of um, uh, tickets on the street occasionally. Um, I know there are speeders. There's one particular car at 10 minutes to 8 almost every morning that just speeds up as soon as he sees, he sees people. And I, I don't know why he does it, but he does. I'd love to see a couple of tickets and let the word get out that you, can't, you shouldn't be speeding. Okay. So, um, Captain Brown could put the radar trailer over there. I think he has in the past. There's probably other streets where there's... Mm -hmm. Bigger concern. Sure. Um, Eight ten a.m. Busy time for you. Yeah. Seems to be nothing going there. on eight o'clock. No. <laughs> yep. Thank you. I mean, the, the the solution to the the problems here would be the installation of a sidewalk on the street, on one side. But we know that that would not be a preferred option by the residents because it would be the removal of the trees. It would be a significant project and really not. Feasible. So that's not going to get the support of anybody through that area because it would change 
the character of the neighborhood when all those streets when all those trees are removed up the street. Yep. So um, I I'll leave it here to the board based on what we have here. If we want to pursue the possibility of the fog lines in this area, or there is not any accidents or pedestrian accident history, speeds are not significant, and it is a kind of a known issue really without a significant solution. I would be more inclined to receive and file this personally. I'd like to see a plan of striping. Jennifer? Receive and file. Ken? Receive and file. Kevin? Receive and file. Receive and file. Max? Receive and file. And I will receive and file. So what that means is that we have the notes here. It gets received. It gets filed with the street. Um, part of what was in our packet here was information from other meetings where the street has come up. So if the issues come up again, there's note of prior conversations that I've had on the street, thoughts that we had about it, and action in the future should it be brought to the attention of the board again. Um, but at this point, we don't really see a solution to the problem that would be supported by the residents of the street, which would be the sidewalk installation. That would be a significant. So. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. With that, we have nobody else signed in this evening, so we will move to the order of the agenda. Go to item number one, Kensington Avenue for speeding concerns. And Chris, I will let you yeah, more couple information to us than what's in this packet if you have anything. Sure. So uh, speeding was brought before us, and uh, somebody made mention of a, of a bicycle accident on Kensington as well. They're asking to try to try to eliminate um, speeds on Kensington. Uh, many of you, or some of you, were part of the board when we went through a road diet with the county, uh, put significant effort in converting that roadway from a four-lane highway to a, uh, was it a three-lane or three? Yeah. three. It changes a couple times, though. So, but um, so I thought it'd be a good time to restudy it, um, comparing the speeds to the before, uh, which Jubin RTC had the before, which would be prior to the road diet, uh, which was an 85th percentile speed of 43 miles per hour, uh, versus what are we getting now? And we are, I think, 42 slash 43. So speeds were really not impacted with the road diet, um, but what was um, pleasantly surprising is uh, there was a reduction in crashes, at least the two years we compared. Uh, we had a full year of 2002 data, and we compared it to, I think, the 2017 or 18, and um, the accidents were halved. So it went from 14 to 14 crashes to eight. Uh, so there has been a, a benefit to safety in that area after the road diet, which is nice to see, but we're still not seeing any type of major reduction in speeds. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. I think I covered it all. I, unfortunately, people will drive the speed that they're comfortable driving. I mean, if we were to refer this to the county, they'd say, oh, maybe this should be speed, maybe this should be signed at 40 miles an hour, because that's what people are doing. That is possibility as well. So, I mean, if, if we, I mean. so, yeah, given the residential nature, I would still be in favor of keeping it at 35, um, uh, particularly because there are some crossings going on there. Uh, but, but you're right, you could make an argument to raise the speed limit to, to 40. I'm not making the argument, I'm saying the county would make the argument. Okay. Somebody <laughs> would. Somebody could. Somebody could make the argument Somebody to increase the, the speed limit so based on the 85th percentile speed. So if, we, if we go to the county, I think the point I'm making is if we go to the county on this one, it could backfire. I think the fact that we had the road diet and we've seen, experienced the 50% decrease in accidents on the road, I think that's significant. 
and unfortunately you still have the issue of people who drive the speed that they are comfortable driving. I believe there's some areas in there where there's parking allowed on the street, other areas where it goes to the center turning median where parking is not allowed. Um, so it does have some changing configurations in there. People probably are still not comfortable parking their cars on the street. They are. They're parking. They are? Yeah. Okay. What's, hap what's happening is, is, is you'll get a burst of traffic from, the, uh, from Main Street when the, when, the signal when the signal changes at the, uh, where the, um, the th where the where the interstate lets off onto you know, crosses Main Street and goes yep. out of Kensington, you'll get a burst of traffic, maybe five, six cars, and then nothing for 30 seconds, then another burst of cars, and so on and so forth. And it's even more now, it's even more noticeable now because they've gone a line. Because in, in days gone by, they'd be racing each other down the two lanes and you know, it was a two it was a two lane going going westbound, it was two lanes, and they'd be racing each other and passing each other, and it was like uh it's like the Cherokee strip. Mm -hmm. Now it's all one just just a line of cars nothing line of cars nothing and so on yeah this is what it used to look like yeah this is what it used to look like and, and, and they'd be racing each other and passing each other down lo that down that street yeah and that's and that's the same situation so overall i mean i live there this is my street and i, I see this and overall it's it's a, a lot better there's been a lot these are the reported accidents you're hearing about and there's been for every reported accident at my corner, there would be five unreported accidents, just the minor ones that the people just agree to settle on their own. And we're not getting those anymore. They're not happening. Um, the biggest complaint I get from my neighbors is that people are using the left turn lane to turn onto uh, Lamarck going towards Worley, using that as a passing lane to get by the people who are making a right turn onto Lamarck going the other way. And I'm sure it's happening further down the line, too. That's the biggest complaint I'm getting from my neighbors. And I'm thinking that'll happen, uh, on, that'll happen on every street. I'm saying that's going to happen on every street. I just don't say anything. And I'm, I'm saying just be glad there's no more there's, there's no more, no more crashes. So if that's the, if that's the biggest complaint, I think we've done a good job here. The fact that the cars are still going in the 40s, they're going to the, it is a straightaway. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's it's almost a mile of, of no stopping, no nothing until you get to Walton Drive where you get the signal, and people are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, Chris, I do have one question. Um, the types of crashes in the on this page that you sent, what does the green dot and the blue dot indicate? Uh, normally, that's injury versus property damage. Okay. And I couldn't tell you which one's which. Okay. Uh, you may recall uh, this board worked with the neighbors to let them decide how to configure the road and the lanes. Uh, and we had a couple of meetings, didn't we, Chris, on that? And then there was back and forth with the county. But I think the residents had some input here. And uh, I know the parking lane is resident input. I can't hear. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah, the, uh, the, the parking lanes on either side, that was definitely resident input. Okay. Uh, I remember the guy said that, have you guys thought about putting parking lanes in there? Well, we talked about bike lanes and everything else. There were, there were several alternatives. Anyway, the, the neighborhood had, had input here, and I think that's great. They got what they wanted. And I was very impressed with those numbers when I saw them. So I was talking to a, a university professor of mathematics and statistics, and I told her about those numbers. And I said, that's all the data we have, one set of data before and after. And I says, is that significant? She says, it's very significant because you, you measured a change in traffic, in people's driving attitudes, or whatever you want, want to call it, and with, with, the, uh, with the lane changes and, and reconfiguring the road. And going forward, she said, if you're really interested, you should keep annually keep on taking measurements, and uh, you can... Uh, Check the performance uh, every year. I'm very impressed. Okay. So with that, I will ask the board, do we want to take any action on this or receive and file the request? I would receive and file personally. I move to receive and file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Eight zero to receive and file based on the history available to us and what we've seen. Further discussion. 
Moving to item number three on the agenda, Westfield Road, review of the speed hump concept. This was actually before us before. It was tabled to be done last summer. They ran out of time, so it's back on the agenda for this year. And Chris, I believe there's just basically a simple question for us on this, correct? Yeah, sure. So uh, DiDonato is our design engineer for traffic calming this year, and uh, they're recommending three speed humps. Uh, this is in coordination with the highway department. Uh, we try to make it so it's not going downhill. It's after the hill. Uh, there wasn't uh, much of a desire to have it placed near Main Street. Uh, so the first one's at um, 86. And this is the standard way to sign these things, but uh, I certainly would encourage any comments about the location as well as the details that were also provided in your package. And the next one is at uh, 139 and then finally whoa there were two on that one yep oh my gosh the next one's at 209 so we try to space them out uh, we looked for places where it wouldn't interfere with driveways although there's driveways everywhere and then we also looked at street lighting on the roadway itself to make sure it was lit um, so I would I guess open it up for discussion. This is ultimately going to go to the um, Pat Lucy. He makes the final determination, um, but any recommendations you have, I'll certainly pass along to him on either the location of them or the signage, striping, whatever you guys have. Have we received any input from the residents either by those proposed uh, speed humps or on the street in general? Uh, Pat Lucy went out to the residents as a whole, sent letters out, and obtained feedback. I don't remember the exact numbers because I wasn't the recipient of the responses, but I believe it was around 50%. Um, it was not, well, either. 50%. Sorry. But the locations weren't known at that time. Like, they, they, those weren't disseminated. Um, but my, I guess the, the question, and it relates to the previous discussion related to City of Buffalo, is their program requires a 75% request from the adjacent property owners, at least response. Um, so we're not following that. We'd rather, I think we're at the position where we'd rather have a data-driven decision on speed, speed humps. You know, this 85th percentile speed was 39 on a residential road. Um, that's you know, up there in terms of the highest recorded on a residential side street. So uh, it's, uh, so I, one more thing before I turn it over. We are collecting data, um, like a before and after, similar to what we're doing on Kensington, did on Kensington. Uh, so we've picked a location in between the speed humps. We've asked Highway to uh, collect that prior to the implementation. And just one more question, uh, question, Chris. Um, was any idea how many people like abstained from saying? I have no idea. No. Okay. Yeah. Chris, my only question is your information that you have there before the speed humps are in. Are you taking counts on the two adjoining streets as well? I didn't hear the question. Are you taking any counts on the adjoining streets as well to see if we divert people? That would be Ivyhurst. I think. Is that Ivyhurst? The adjoining, oh, the adjoining streets? No, uh, we did the not do that. Agar, there's Eggert and Ivyhurst. I think, yeah, Ivyhurst is the next residential over. Because what's going to happen is the people yeah. are going to the, 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 the It's a good point. I think it would be, yeah, I think it would be interesting to get a count on yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Ivyhurst before they're put in as well, and then count both to see if it shifts traffic, just to have that information. And something to consider also is Westfield is going to be a major um, traffic supplier to, to the St. Benedict. So if you take the counts during June, July, and August, well, you're not going to get a good, a good picture of what's going on there. Well, we'll count it at the same month. We'll make sure we count it off school. You know, if we count it first time off school, we'll count it again off school. So how far do you want to take it? I mean, Ivyhurst would be the next logical cut through. Yeah, I think just the one over. Just because Castro kind of dead ends at yeah. Bondcroft. You know, it would be interesting just to see the speeds on Ivyhurst because it's a straight shot. Um, I don't think there's any stops, stops until you get down to... Uh, yeah, there's one right. 
Bondcroft, I think. Yeah, there's Bondcroft down there, but that's that's. Yeah. You, you've already gone the full the full racetrack there. Yeah. And then you got to stop and take that little that little do to do to do to Long Meadow. Yeah, I'm just so that we have the supporting data. If you put it on, we assume that it's going to create a traffic diversion. We're hoping it's going to push it to Eggert, but to have the data before and after would be good to know. It's a great point. I mean, again, let's keep in mind that this is this is the test case. This is the first test case. It's been well thought out as a good test case, and uh, I guess we got to see what happens. So, I would make the motion to proceed with the three speed humps as proposed by the consultant and their locations. Is this a a uh, demonstration Hold project? On one second, Dan. I made the motion to proceed based on the design from the consultant. So is there a second to that? I'll second. Okay, so there's a second from Jennifer. So that motion's on the table now. So open to further comment now. So go ahead, Dan. Is this a permanent, meant to be a permanent installation or is this a demonstration? I think it's to be determined, it's, isn't it? It's being installed as a permanent. We are not installing removable speed humps. Okay. Any further comments, questions, concerns? Go ahead, Captain. So when all of the other streets in town, similar to this, request speed humps, what is the response from the board? Refer to highway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, let me rephrase that. No, one. I would. That's it. When everybody else. Yeah. I would imagine. I, I would, uh, yes. Captain, I imagine if after we do the before and after study, if it uh, is found to be successful, we then create a criteria and, um, you know, the, 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 the item that came in here today at 33 is not, not going to meet it. You know, right. Right. The, the policies that I've seen, we've collected well over 20 nationwide. Uh, they have specific speed criteria that they use, um, as well as geometry and network of streets and uh, a whole lot of other factors that we will implement so that it's, you know, it's controlled. I don't have an answer to that. Yeah. So we'll look at, we have the counts from Westfield before, right? So we'll have a count after they do it. We'll get a count on Ivyhurst before the work is done, and we'll get a count on Ivyhurst after. Um, I think once we see those numbers, we'll then look to see if we want another one three months or six months. But I would, we're, we're going to have to do another one at some point. I think we're going to let this one probably run for at least the summer. And over the winter, get feedback from highway as to how it affects snow plows, everything else over the course of the winter. So probably review it again around this time next year. I would move that I would say that we don't want to become the city of Buffalo where they're on every street in the city of Buffalo where they're moving at this point. Well, we enjoy the public coming to join us. The captain's right. This is this is opening the this is opening the yeah. can of worms. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm, I, well, we, that's what we're going to find out if it's wrong. I mean, and the speed homes are great until they're in front of your house, and you get the dump, the dump. And there's maybe a hundred people in that street who will say yes, and there'll be one person who says no, because that's a person in front of their house. But they're going to go like ballistic at some point and like lose their mind because they can't sleep. We'll see. I we'll see. I have friends who live in city of Buffalo who have a speed bump literally in front of their house and they the only issue they have is that when people are coming down the street they expect them to be going a lot faster so they tend to back out of their driveway like very hesitantly and they're actually going a lot slower so now they have more time to back out of their driveway so there is that okay they like it there are, certain, I, there are streets on this for town that absolutely would benefit I mean, we, as a board, have been talking about traffic calming for years and waiting to get some tools in the toolbox. So let's, let's test them out, see how they work, and maybe they don't. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that's, what this, that's what this one's all about, is to see what happens. And previous highway superintendents have not been in favor, so we have one that is willing to try it. So we should, you know, applaud Pat to give it, give it a shot. Okay. 
Um, so with that, I will, we have the motion before us. I'll move to vote on it. I think we just need to reflect in the minutes here that Kristen Goss did arrive um, at this point. So it'll change the votes. I'm not sure, Kristen, I'll ask you, do you have enough information based on when you walked in to vote on, do you have enough information to vote on this item or will you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did so I didn't, I forgot. I'm sorry, Kristen. Okay. I did remember it when you walked in like, oh yeah. Okay. So with that, I'll ask all in favor to proceed based on the motion before us for the installation of the, did you have something else to say before we move there? No? Okay. So all those in favor of the installation of the three speed humps as proposed by the consultant for referral over to the highway department, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 9-0. Okay. Do it. Let's do it. The next item is number four, North French and Klein signal. North, uh, North Forest, Chris. Sorry, North, I should have let you do this. Sorry. North Forest and Klein signal request for tur right turn overlap for westbound Klein Road. Uh, I believe Chairman Frost brought this up at the last meeting. It was determined that it should be held until this meeting is an official item. Uh, essentially what Eric is asking for is on the screen. There is a this is a signalized intersection and the southbound lefts are given a permissive, I'm sorry, a uh, protected left turn arrow. So essentially a left, left turn arrow to turn left. And Eric is questioning if it would be better for traffic flow efficiency if the westbound rights were then given a green to proceed instead of uh, doing their typical stop uh, and right on red. Um, right now, the traffic signal is not equipped to provide a right arrow. The signal would have to be modified. Uh, I don't know of any warrants or criteria to put that sort of uh, signal up, uh, but I did provide you some information related to what an overlap looks like. Um, so throw that up real quick. That's what we're looking at. Again, we're given a right arrow at the same time as the opposing, well, the left going southbound in this particular situation. And we do not have, we do have some accident. I think we had one. Oh, yeah, there were six accidents. One was related to a right on red driver striking a northbound bicycle. It was uncertain if an overlap phase would have prevented the crash. So a lot of times when we look at accidents, we say, would a change be correctable to that accident? I couldn't tell given the language in the accident report on if that bike was going against the red, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's what we got. Since I propose this, I'll open this up to everybody else for discussion. A logical way to move traffic. Yeah, I think we talked about this a little bit last month. I liked the idea. The only issue then would just be to make sure that the span wire could handle it and the controller cabinet, but that's not our our not call. Our, not our call. Nope. Chris, would we would we want to make that a flashing yellow when it's not? or just make it a red ball? Talk about the lefts or the, the, right? the right? The right, the overlap. We'll go to if they green. get a green arrow, when the green arrow... Think about that. Know, can you're you, you're can only you getting... A, can you do a flash on a right? I don't know. Yeah. I know the DOT installed those signs that, so you know, those, those ones on Niagara Falls Boulevard that... That are never uh, illuminated? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, allow, that tell you when you can turn right but you'd have a, so you'd have a, you'd basically have a green light if you could go. You'd have a red light. So when you'd have a, red, you'd have you have a green arrow when the southbound, when the southbound left the arrow is going. The green arrow. Yeah. They and then when north, when north and southbound have just a green with no green arrow, 
what yeah. happens to the right yeah, turn I think, phase. I think it turns it dark. A red, a red ball or a flashing a, yellow a arrow? arrow. I, I think it turns dark. I think it doesn't light up anything because you're still allowed to turn red on red. Yeah. Well, you have a red bulb now. Yeah. You do? You maintain the red oh, bulb. I see. Yes. But no red arrow. Correct. Correct. You'd have the two red balls. You'd have a green arrow saying that when the protected left is happening, you have the ability to make the right hand turn on green, but the rest of the phasing of the signal would. That makes, sense. That makes sense to me. Current configuration. Yeah. I, I assume there's no pedestrian. There is a pedestrian crosswalk. Yeah, but there's, but no, there's no there's no button. there's no pet heads. Oh, this, if we're gonna do controller cabinet stuff, maybe add pedestrian signals there too. Yeah, I'm just thinking about funding while we yeah. talk about this. <laughs> so we do have funding, and Greg knows this; he's been trying to track it. Um, about we have some funding for pedestrian related. Um, in infrastructure at intersections. I'm wondering if we could make this a bigger project just to have a place to install this right turn arrow. You know, it's more difficult to just try to ask for a right turn arrow, but if I m spun it into another bigger project for pedestrian safety, it's potential. Is, are there pedestrians here? I don't know, but this was on the list of potential PSAP locations, Greg, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how well it rated. There's a synagogue nearby. Yeah, you have a synagogue nearby, right up, Just right in the corner there, which I think is potential yeah, future expansion. But traffic on a Friday. I don't know. There's, there's a house that was there that was knocked down. Oh, really? That's right on the corner. So I think there's one house between the synagogue and the property, and I think the synagogue owns that house. There's one house. And you know, if if they're too bad, they're going to be walking because they can't. Vehicles. So, I, we say all the time that funding isn't our problem. So, right. I just, do we, like, I just, you have to decide if you want this just to be a right uh, arrow or something bigger like a right arrow with pedestrian accommodations. That's what I would love to come out of this board, one, one direction or another. So can we get a pedestrian count to see what we got going there? I, 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 when there's a traffic signal and there's crosswalks and there's ADA ramps, and there's no pedestrian signals, that just doesn't sit well with me. I'd much rather have the pedestrian signals there. Yeah, if we were to, if we were to rebuild this now, it would be have pet heads automatically, regardless of pedestrian activity. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, I'm just thinking, if, if, if it's ever asked why you put it here, it'd be nice to have the counts, but okay. So Chris, my one question on that, if we, I'm, I'm in favor of installation of the pet heads and making it into a larger project, since North Forest is a county road. Um, would there be any potential funding source if it's put no. together as a pedestrian to go with the county as well on? They don't own Zero. the signal. They don't own the signal. Yeah, we, we have a permit with the county to maintain and make any improvements to the traffic signal. They're, they're not on the hook for any uh, improvements. Okay, and then the only other question I would have is we know that, we know that North Forest, I'm sorry, yeah, North Forest. North Forest is not in the greatest condition road condition there um, probably should be on the county's list at some point for a mill and repave if there's again I don't know if a greater project for the whole corridor from the county for improvement there as part of this to assist with pedestrian improvement to justify just asking the question if it would make sense to re to ask the question as part of as, I am. If, if we if we are looking to make this enhancement to the intersection, yeah, is there yeah. any I, enhancements coming from the county for a potential repave of that stretch of road that could catch up funding from anywhere uh, yeah. from their sources for pedestrian safety through the corridor, including this? I don't know if this is the answer to your question, but I would not want to put town monies into putting like type LS, that's the ladder crosswalks, if the county's just going to come in and restripe it. Normally, I would do like an enhanced crosswalk slash stop bars as part of a pedestrian uh, project. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we would check with the county at that point to see if there's any pending projects that would eliminate our work. Okay, that makes sense. 
So is there, do we need a motion from someone at this point for what we've talked about? What would the motion yes. be to, to, to install? To install the pedestrian heads at the crosswalk and the installation of a protected right turn face? I'll second it. I'll second it. Oh, okay, yeah, right. One of us has Someone's to make got it. A motion. Someone's got a motion for it. I'll move, I'll move it. Okay, so motion from Kevin, a second from Dan. Right. What he said for the motion. <laughs> Any further conversation? None being heard, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I would oppose. Okay. Just so that we go someplace where there's actually pedestrians. Okay. So motion approved eight to one. Okay, with that, we will close item number four and we will move to item number five we've already discussed and we'll move to another one brought by me. Um, Young's and Klein Road, a southbound left split failure and turn arrow investigation that was no. conducted. Item six goes back here. <sighs> Can you just give a brief recap, Eric? So at this particular intersection, um, there is a protected turn phase on Klein Road for traffic heading east. There's a protected left turn onto Young's Road heading north, I believe. Yes, that's the only protected turn phase. Um, with this intersection, there is, it's a quick signal um, from the timing perspective as to how the signal runs, which is good based on the traffic counts that are there that it cycles pretty quickly through. However, it creates a difficulty for cars making the left-hand turns on to Klein Road from Young's Road. Um, so the ask for this particular intersection is for the installation of protected turn phase on Young's Road turning onto Klein Road, particularly the southbound Young's Road heading east on Klein. Um, so with that, Chris, is the information that was in your packet um, we do show that the turn phases are the, the counts are not warranted um, for those protected turn phases. However, there was information in there on the existing crash investigation that the crashes at that intersection are three and a half times above the statewide average. In addition to that, the study that was done for the development of a new subdivision going over there, there is language in there indicating that um, 23 total crashes, the predominant crash types were left turn, 30%, right angle 22%, and rear end 17%. The left turn crashes primarily occurred in the northbound and southbound directions and were generally attributed to fail to yield right of way. Sight distance is adequate at the intersection and there is permissive protective left turn phase only for westbound and that consideration should be given to modifying the signal and replacing the northbound southbound permissive left turn movements to permissive protective phasing. So that's in the traffic study that was done for the development. Um, that was being so, reviewed by the, for the development on Klein Road. Yeah, so to summarize everybody, the criteria that we normally use for d uh, figuring out if left arrow should go in was not met. Uh, that's based on volume, opposing volumes, conflicts, etc. But we have a TIS on hand from a nearby development, 166 Klein, that has indicated what uh, the chairman just read that there should be consideration given the amount of accidents, the types of accidents, uh, to converting that to a, a, a left turn arrow. So, um, one, one question that I do have, uh, Captain, there was an accident, injury accident at this intersection the Tuesday after Memorial Day, which would not be in any of our information here based on when this was done. Do you know any information on that accident of cause of left turn or anything? Okay. I can look into it. I was just, I was just curious if that was caused by a left turn movement or not. Didn't have any significant injuries, so. Okay. Didn't quite get to me. Um, so we also looked at myovision at this intersection. Uh, we have a smart signal there, and commonly look at split failures to figure out, you know, is there a particular leg that's uh, having difficulty moving traffic. So 
Um, this big spike in red at AM indicates that it's essentially consistent at every single leg. Uh, when you when you have like a, a northbound, southbound that are spiking like that, but a westbound, eastbound that is not and has blue, you can sometimes modify the signal timing and adjust it to make the, uh, the legs that are having difficulty, you know, change the timing so it's more equal. In this case, they're all equally bad in the AM. So we did not in the office think there was a potential to make significant modifications to help uh, move traffic through there. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? So Chris, with that information there, if you installed the protective phases, it should clear that red up on that diagram, correct? Or will it decrease the effect of the, the traffic movement at the intersection by adding it? I think it depends. I, I don't have an answer to that. Uh, it's it's going to provide more more delay to the opposing through, so it it could worsen it in spots and improve others. I I don't I think you'd have to do an analysis to figure to answer that question. Didn't we put Klein Road up for like a big a big 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 like? Say it again. Didn't we put Klein Road up for a request for a big? A big corridor um, analysis. I know at one point we discussed Klein and Hopkins. It wouldn't extend this far. There was stuff that was done for the intersection of Klein and Hopkins from the county looking to do work on Hopkins that we looked at the whole corridor of that intersection going past the Dashes Plaza with the library, mm -hmm. with the park that nothing ever came of. Um, but I don't think we went down as far as this intersection in that. So, so Chris, would the next step in there, would, would we be just looking? So, just so I'm yeah, not I, just muted. No, I do totally agree with everything oh. on this one because this is, a, you know, I live in the same neighborhood, so we should totally add the left lane. It's that, just that stretch is wild because you got the park there, right? You've got an, uh, a retirement neighborhood like a block over and then it's it's i think it's the only uh it is the only spot on young's without frontward facing traffic on right past that for say that again the only spot the only sp part of young's without frontward face uh yes uh without uh, driveways right so that's why the speeds are so bad there but yeah that gets bad virtually every day i have to drive there so. Thank you. So the only other tidbit of information is related to level of service. Just had that up. Where is it? So the TIS is indicating that that southbound left is nowhere near failing. You know, they're showing a level of service of B. So that's <coughs> kind of conflicts with what I saw in my old vision, to be perfectly honest. That's probably running, well, running where it is because everyone's making the left on red. Southbound. Screw that split. Well, failure. actually, you know what? Southbound. Yeah, no. It's, lefts are okay. The throughs are, are level service D existing. But not failing. I don't know. So I guess my question would be, be motioning to install at this point, or would we be motioning for further analysis to be conducted? I mean, I would move to install it simply because we have myovision, and we have, I don't know what more analysis we can possibly do. You know, at a certain point. I, I agree with Max. I would move to install based on the fact that we have a traffic study that was done in the area saying that consideration should be given to it and we have the data from myovision indicating the split failures that exist on the left turn movements if we install it can it be uninstalled if we find out that it was a bad idea well of course but it'll take a lot of work well i mean why not try it 
and then we'll, we'll try it for a few months, see what happens. I mean, through myovision, Chris, the only time that the left signals would be called for is if myovision detects the cars in the lane to make the movement, correct? I couldn't hear you. So the, with myovision, the only way the turning phase would be activated is if myovision detects a car in the lane to make the turning movement. Yes, correct. So myovision uh, detector zones would be modified to include that left turn. And we would be looking to, we would add the left turn phase at all turning movements. Yeah, right now you said there's, uh, they're already on the eastbound, westbound? No, they're only in the eastbound to northbound Young's, Okay. it says. So we'd have to install the other leg of Young's, the other leg of Klein as well, right? Because we wouldn't leave one without it. Yeah, normally you do opposing. Uh, I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. So Max, are you making a motion to install left turning phases, protected left turning phases? Yeah, I'll, I'll, the, the one thing that does get a little confusing is if you're, you do the, if you do it the other way, there's only, oh no, no, sorry, no, you're right, yeah, that's right. So your motion is to inst install turning, protected turning phases through all legs of the intersection. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. It. Second from Mark? Yeah. Any further conversation? None being heard. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 9 0. 18. Where did that uh, TIS come from? <clears throat> seven, is, seven is X'd. Klein Road subdivision. At the end of Klein Road. Chris, can you just back out the map a little bit for Dan's question? I wonder where this. If you look at the green patch that's right there by the self, look at Klein Road. Chris, the area where the subdivision is going in, where the green oh, grass is oh, right that, there. That, that, that okay. subdivision right there. Same I think what is it? 18, yeah. 18 yeah. houses. Yeah. We had them do a TIS for that. Okay. No, they approved it. I believe. Um, item number seven from the agenda was withdrawn from the resident, so we will skip that one, which takes us to item number eight, Hartford Court. Oh, sorry, Hartford Road. And Chris, we'll turn this over to you. Okay, Hartford Road is really the southern roadway that runs between uh, Sweet Home and Millersport of the Hartford Road Association uh, and slash neighborhood. Um, there's a single stop sign, always stop at Imperial where my cursor is. Uh, we placed a counter kind of mid block where my cursor is. Um, I don't think you guys have that information because it came late. We're going to go over it real quick. By the way, there was no crashes related to speed on that roadway. Uh, so this one's interesting. Uh, Hartford Road eastbound. You have, you never, you're reading that right, 2,832 vehicles at 33 miles per hour. Speeds are not that crazy, but a crazy amount of volume in opposed opposed to the westbound which is only 613 so we have about 4.5 times as much going eastbound than we do westbound speeds are similar 33 miles per hour um if you were to look at speeding you know we've got about eight occurring at six o'clock um Let's see here. So in terms of why that's happening, I think I just heard Kevin talking about it. Uh, you know, it's easier if you're going eastbound on Sheridan to turn left and then turn right on Hartford to make it over to Millersport. This is a signalized intersection to then scoot to the throughway or to the uh, 290. Um, I mean, it's, it's basically a deer path for that, for that traffic. The way this traffic 
Residents are asking for an all-way stop or some type of speed control. So may, may I make a uh, note that on the north side of Hartford, there's no parking signs all the way down? Oh, thank you. That's why Chris, there's no parking. So seeing that traffic count, it indicates to us that people are making that movement that you just indicated. Is there any ability to refer this to New York State DOT for Sheridan Drive to determine if there's enough road width or anything there that they could have two left turning lanes from Sheridan to Millersport Highway instead of one? Because that's the, the cause of the problem is there's not enough stacking there. The signal length doesn't allow it to happen where if you were able to put in two left turn lanes in there to allow the cars to proceed through there, you would eliminate people using Hartford. Uh, yeah, you can ask them to study anything. If there's a similar situation when you're headed westbound on Sheridan, that left turn lane, it, the, the pocket's not big enough and the timing's not long enough. So what oftentimes what I do to get to my neighborhood, if I know I'm not gonna make that light, exactly, I go straight through the intersection. Yeah, I do the same thing. And cut through. Exactly that maneuver. And it's all, it's all because that left turn light from Sheridan to Millersport is not long enough. So maybe it's just a timing thing and not necessarily a capacity two and it, lane and thing. it's like a, I don't know, two and a half minute cycle length. So if you miss that green arrow, you're there for a very long you're time. You're there for a very long time. And it's weird because the left, I believe, I believe that's the intersection where the green the green protected turn phase comes at the end of this cycle rather than the beginning. You're nodding your head. You're familiar with that no one too. Wants, you're saying lagging versus leading? So uh, yeah, it's a lagging turning movement versus a leading turning which, movement. Which direction? The one that we're talking about. Eastbound. Eastbound? Yeah, those are um, annoying. So I, I don't know if we send a letter to DOT asking them to do it. I don't think you're right. I think that's, I think that's leading because it goes at the same time as the westbound. I don't know. I think it does. That's the one that I, I, I hate that intersection, so I avoid it all the time. <laughs> I think, I think you're talking about sweet, I think you're talking about sweet home. This one I just don't even bother. I think sweet home is lagging for whatever reason. I take Hartford. I take Hartford. Get my coffee and then get on the 290. There you go. That works too. Um, so I don't know. If part, I think part of, the, part of the ask here should be to refer that refer to DOT to review the timing of, the, of that intersection to see if any improvements can be made to the left-hand turning movements. Yeah, we can just point it out to them and ask for a solution yeah what's that I know be nice <laughs> okay anybody uh, anybody else have any comments does anybody in favor of a, an always stop in there it's not going to meet the warrants on the minor legs no. nor is speeding an issue uh, not that yeah, and I think the resident did make a comment specific to people not stopping there. I mean, the other question they would have there is one side of the road is no parking. I, we could look to remove the parking restriction to allow parking on both sides of the street to help calm traffic. I don't know if the residents would be in favor or opposed. I don't know if I've seen. I don't know if I've seen people park on the on the south side either. Side anyway. I did the other day. One car, I think the full block. Is that, I think the, the south side is, is largely businesses, isn't it? Well, there's residential. There, there's some residential, yeah, there's, there's but then as you're closer there. to Sheridan, it's, it's businesses. There. Is it wide enough to facilitate parking on both sides? I mean, it's probably 28, so you'd have to do the jockey thing. You know, I, I drive the street all the time, and you know, I haven't seen any park. I haven't seen any speeding at all. Yeah, speeding's not really a problem. It's just counts. And, and the counts and the counts don't say there's any speeding problem. Okay, I was just bringing it up. 
I moved to receive and file. Uh, let's refer to DOT. You okay? Let's yeah. Refer to DOT. DOT. Yeah, refer to DOT to see if improvements can be made at the signal to eliminate the cut through traffic. To eliminate that, that, or yeah, reduce that, that eastbound cut so that's the traffic. Miller's Port, Sherry and the Miller's Port. Correct. Any other new business to be brought before the board? Hmm. No other new business being heard. We'll move to old business item number A, Mugle Road Resident Survey. We will hold that item uh, based on the timing of our May meeting. That survey has not been conducted yet. And we will move to item B, Romney Consumer Square, request for an always stop sign. And I believe we have individuals here for that item. Yeah, let me just give a brief. Intro, Matt. Yeah. Okay, so the board reviewed this earlier in the year. There was a request by Benderson to convert this intersection, which is Romney is a local roadway uh, with the TJ Maxx Plaza and Michael's Plaza to the north. Uh, I forget what Plaza was at Consumer Square. Um, they wanted that, they asked for that intersection to have a crosswalk and an all way stop. Sign warrant analysis, and it was simply a request to add stop signs to the current configuration. The Traffic Safety Board. Uh, denied that uh, in terms of a in terms of a recommendation at that time we also did not have support from the police department nor the highway superintendent uh, since uh, since then subsequently we've received an all warrant analysis that's been included in your package that indicates yes it does meet warrants um, for an always stop using the MUTCT uh, criteria in addition uh, they had, let me look. They had um, a handy little um, chart here that showed that you were suspicion last time you reviewed this was correct. The um, queuing uh, would have been outrageous. It would be uh, pretty darn close to Niagara Falls Boulevard. Um, if you were to implement an always stop. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, that's in the northbound, southbound. Oh, that's existing, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, there it is, that's what I was looking at. So the eastbound Romney Road is a stacking queue length. If you were just to do an always stop without any type of mitigation or changes to that intersection of 263 feet, which again, gets you pretty close. I think it stops right around here. Um, so, uh, what Benderson is proposing, Matt, do you mind if I pop this open? Yeah, go ahead. Is a complete change in the intersection to add a dedicated left turn lane, a through right and dedicated left turn lane, uh, as well as a northbound right turn lane. Uh, and after doing that, if you look at the analysis, Where's that thing? Oh, it's right here, sorry. After doing that, the queuing lengths uh, greatly get de decreased. Uh, I've got a figure that I made up here showing the highlights of the stacking at the 95th percentile. That highlight is a scaled distance of uh, what essentially would be queuing at that intersection. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Matt. Hopefully I covered some of that. Yeah, so no, that's the, that's the main difference. We do meet the warrants, um, wide, not widening out, but just modifying the intersection. If you go to the aerial really quick, there's no actual widening that's needed. That um, bulb out on the Michaels side, just after the driveway, we actually put that in when we did the Michaels construction, when the right turn lane was put in. So we would just remove that, basically put the road back to what's, what its old width was and just have a three lane section on each of those sides. So there'll be dedicated left turn lanes, one into Boulevard North, one into Boulevard South, the way we have it. And then there'll be dedicated through lanes as well. Overall, we think it's gonna help 
the intersection perform better. We think it's going to help safety as well. I know there haven't been um, a lot of crash data yet there, but if you go out there and you look at it, it's kind of a free for all. People definitely shoot gaps. You see, you see people trying to cross the road. So overall, we're looking at it very much from a safety standpoint, trying to get ahead of any issues that happen. It just gets busier and busier and busier in that area. So we overall think it'll be a, a good improvement for that area. So it looks like you widen this out to make that a through right, correct. and then you widen this out to accommodate the three lane. That is correct, yeah, because yeah. initially what, like the history of this area is Romney Road was just like the 40 foot wide section. We did the Michaels to get better sight lines coming out of where Michaels was. We actually put in the dedicated right turn lane going into the drive for target, had that bulb out for the green space, then the dedicated right turn lane for Michaels, and then we had the other bump out to kind of narrow down the road, make dedicated right turn lanes to try to help sight line distances coming out. Right. We wouldn't have the sight line issue anymore at the Michaels driveway that we have to worry about with the all way stop. Everyone will see who's there. So that's why so we I, can widen it back out in that direction. Matt, I don't know if you mentioned it. I certainly forgot to. Is it's uh, the, one of the main reasons to uh, that this request is coming in is for pedestrian safety and pedestrians crossing. So in December, they provided a count specific to uh, pedestrian movements and they indicated over a hundred are traveling north-south at this leg C right now uncontrolled unmarked uh, and again that was in December for an all-day uh, count uh, I don't know what it is now but it's got to be a lot more given the summer months Correct. Um, so. and then like, like I said it's going to continuously get busier but and it's overall it's, it's definitely a safety thing uh, as well from cars for pedestrians for everything just trying to slow traffic down as well as we know cars shoot down Romney as well. If you look at the actual turning movement data specifically, you'll also see the traffic coming down Romney. Once you get past the, the eight to nine, it's half the cars coming eastbound on Romney or turning left in the boulevard as well. So it's not just through traffic that's going there. That's why you see the stacking distance is actually the same for the leftbound as it is to through because so many cars are turning left at that Michaels driveway coming in as well. It's not just that it's a continuous through movement that's stopping there. So it's really trying to, to slow it down, provide good pedestrian safety, keep cars from trying to turn left out of both of those driveways from trying to shoot the gap. And when they see a, like a two or three second gap trying to get out there, so just from everything that's going on out there, it's just really trying to make it safer. And we think this is the best way to do it. I have a question, the synchro Printouts that were in our packet, the existing printout shows conflicting pedestrians per hour was entered as zero. And then both of the proposed conditions, there is no pedestrian volume in there. Okay. So I, I don't know if they, when you run a report, you can have different options. So I, I just want to make sure that the analyses included the pedestrian volumes because if there are peds crossing, that's going to delay the vehicles from, yep. so I, that, that's my big concern. Other than that, I, I like the layout. Okay. Only question I have is, um, to, uh, just to touch on that, no, I don't need to touch on that. Uh, just peds also count as part of entering vehicles in a warrant analysis. I don't even know if you included that, but it just further justifies the potential for, you know, the, the, the criteria being met for an all-way stop. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not opposed. I'm actually, I personally like the design and am in favor of it. Um, just curious, the next intersection down, do we foresee, nope, the other direction, Chris? from the target bypass there, that's a hard intersection as well. Um, do we envision more people moving to the other intersection when it becomes four-way control that will actually increase the parking lot traffic going to the other intersection coming out? So which, I, I just the, did. Where Chris's hand is right now, that arrow, yeah. right? That will not be controlled. It'll remain the same configuration. Correct. That's a very hard spot to get in and out of as well. Yeah. Do we? foresee vehicular traffic in the plaza moving to the next driveway over to increase, thus increasing the 
cars coming out of the plaza on that side because they're going to go down one more driveway because they have the ability to more easily make the left-hand turn out. They could. The other thing, it's also going to add extra gaps as well to that driveway being downstream of okay. the stop sign as well. So any, so the cars will actually be stopping there at the stop sign. So that'll be slowing them coming to that. So that'll also make the left turn coming out of there yeah, a little bit easier easy. because the, the traffic coming in that direction, it won't change it in the other direction, but it will at least it'll create a gap. It'll, it'll create, create a little create bit gaps. more of a gap. I mean, people could go there to the safer one. I most likely would. I try to go to the more stop controlled ones and try to avoid shooting. And if it adds 90 seconds to your trip, it's better than three hours when you get blindsided on a car. I've had that happen running through a green light before. So yeah, it's not fun. Okay. And I do have one question. So just for clarity on the, the proposed design. So that little strip of grass right where the, like right below the building, that would be in the proposed plan would be going away and it would be a Correct, full like yes. lane. Yup. So that would go away on that as well, because we would be basically bringing that straight through because what we would be doing with the lane is you're coming from Romney as you start making that first turn going towards the target driveway, call it. That would be a through right turn lane and you would be continuing in that lane as a through right lane. So then you would have to get over to make the left hand turn because you don't want people coming down Romney being in that left hand turn lane, not wanting to turn left and getting over to the right, you wanna make everyone have to get into the left lane to make the turn. So yes, so that will go away to keep that one lane all along the outside. Yeah, the only concern I have with that is that, would that, would that create a similar situation as what we were talking about on North, was it North French or North French with the Tops Plaza where it was kind of like you had a right turn lane and the entrance, do you know what I'm talking about? There's like the entrance there and cars we didn't know like the, the I, I was they, here. yeah i know what you were talking about yeah. i don't necessarily think so because what you'll have is if you're coming on romney you'll have the ability to turn right at target or go straight and that'll be the only single lane that's there if you're going straight you'll continue straight and then once you come past that driveway if you want to turn left to tj maxx you'll get into the left hand turn lane to go there or you'll be able to make a right at michaels or you'll just continue through so it's not a dedicated for the, I think at the transit North French one, I think what happens is you drive into that dedicated right yeah. turn lane and that would let you turn right on the transit versus having to get over. So this is why we kind of designed it like this to avoid that. But wouldn't that still be like if in theory, if someone was traveling westbound on Romney yep. and there was a, let's say there is a car trying to exit from the target, um, you know, yep. uh, e exit. And they and somebody is driving westbound. They turn on their right hand blinker, but and they are they're planning on turning right into the actual Marshalls Plaza. Yep. Would that car that car might think that they're going to turn right there the where they might, are? The car might think. I mean, at that point, you'd be signaling a, a much much greater distance because yeah. you kind of be on the turn at Romney signaling. I find, my personal opinion. I see. I think people signal a lot closer to the driveway than, yeah. than farther away. Could it happen? It's possible. I think there's enough separation where it wouldn't necessarily. I mean, could this, could the proposed uh, change be accomplished without removing that little bump out? It could. The problem you would have though is people would be driving into the dedicated left turn lane for TJ Maxx. Okay. If we didn't do that bump out because that bump out would align with the left turn lane. So then if someone was driving down and they were going straight, they'd then be forced to come by that green. Then you have to get, get over to the right just to go straight. So you're trying to accommodate the through movement without having to go left or right. And you're trying to make anyone turn to have to get, get off to the side. It's kind of what you're looking for there. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Now, that's, I, I understand what, are you creating a conflict here? As this car is going straight, this car is now, now you have two cars going straight here. Yeah, but there's two lanes to do it now. But now one car. One. 
So are you, so at the, so where are you looking? So he's looking, um, I think this right turn lane turns to a right through. Is that what you're talking about, Eric? Yeah, that turns to a right through. So you have the ability that you're potentially going to go to two lanes of traffic and both cars want to go straight. So really, in looking at that, you're right. What we really should do is just as you come around Romney, it stays as a single lane. There shouldn't be, so there, so that center lane should really get hatched out to match up with the left turn lane. So when you're coming around, if I can. Yeah, it's, it's more clear on what's in front of Dan and Jennifer. I don't. You'd want to get rid of the right turn movement there, wouldn't you? Right, because I, I know what you're, you're going to have people that's going to start going to two, two lanes of traffic, and then the guy that's in this lane, he doesn't want to make a left. He wants to go straight. That's, yeah, that's why, yes, that's why we're trying to make this. You're right. I know what you're saying. And having this here, so whether it's making this a left turn lane coming here, whether it's doing the two things in one, in one case, it's just more designed to do what yeah, I see what you're saying. The plan was. Does that make sense to you, Tom? <laughs> uh, it makes sense to me, I think. But you create a... Yes, that maybe sends increased traffic in that area. Right. People coming westbound on that. It's either a hatch or a, a physical bump out. But we're trying to avoid a highway work permit. So we don't want to yep. create a problem do we know what the number of people making the right hand turn in there is you create a rear end conflict with people slowing down to make that right hand turn which just slows them down there before they get to the next one right yeah so you're gonna I mean up until five years ago there was never a right hand turn lane the right hand turn lane only went in when Michael's was the Michael's expansion was built and it was just kind of was put in because of the additional right turn lane we then put in for Michaels. We kind of had to back up that design. So going back, yeah, it, I mean, it, that, it was not there. It looks more like a loading dock entrance. I would, I would hope visitors would keep going and turn, turn here instead. But it's a through street. It's a loading dock thing. It gets, yeah. it does get, I, I, get I mean, it. it gets used. Like, there's no, it definitely get all the access drives yeah. at that boulevard get used for sure. Yes. It is a loading dock and it's not the most appealing, but it, it does absolutely get right. used. There's a block well, yeah, can, blocked really good day by his truck. What? There's a truck on the whole street. Just, Chris, if you go back to your other, the pink drawing. Oh, sorry. Do you have to go looking at that queue line there? Do you, looking at the, the queue line and that movement with the right and the straight being longer than the left, could you make it a, a dedicated right turn lane with a through and a left? No, because then it doesn't no, it align. Doesn't, on, it doesn't, doesn't line up. up. It offsets with, it offsets yeah, we, ha we have yeah. to do the two to. No, I see it. Yeah, now. it's. Yeah, and I think a lot of this is right turns just like a majority is left turns here. Right. I think the hatching at the other one helps with the problem. Yeah, agreed. So this is referred to town or? 
Benderson so, conducts this. Yeah, this one's interesting because Benderson would make the actual physical modifications. Right. You're not asking the town to do that. But the town would have to take a town board action to uh, you know, hold a public hearing for an always stop. So we'd have to line up the timing where you know, we, we come in with a town board action yep. just after or during your construction. Yeah. We could always put up, you know, temporary stop signs, you know, I until mean, that we town board. Like, we'll, like, we would be ready to do it whenever we can get it designed up. We'd have to get a PIP, I would assume, as well. Yeah, Tom, any, you'd, any you'd have to work. talk about, is there any type of site plan? I, you know, there is, because this right turn doesn't exist, right? Yeah. It's, there's two lanes there. It might be flipping the, st the striping. I'd have to look at that. But, yeah, I mean, we can still submit a minor mod, so it's part of the plans, and that's not a, that's... We have to design it up anyway and do the final design plans. Yeah, depending on what, what the work is in your own sites, you might mark your minor mods. Yep. But you're right, that would be a PIP. Yep. So make a motion to, I don't know what we're making a motion for. Make a motion to, <laughs> making a motion to proceed. Do we do we it's make really, the your your request is whether or not you want a stop sign because that's going to gear that's going to that's the vehicle to move this whole thing. So, can we? Yes. Right. So we're going to recommend. I'll make a motion to recommend this design to the town board with the installation of an all-way stop sign as part of the design. Yeah. With. Conditioned with changes to the um, westbound yep. uh, approach as discussed. With changes to the westbound approach as discussed. <laughs> Is there a second for the motion? Second. Second by Greg. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried 9-0. Nine 9-0 zero. Nine zero in favor. Any other old business to bring before the board? Yes, I'd like to know what's going on with Shacken at the corner of, of East Bentham and uh, Kensington. The whole valet parking thing and the bush that blocks the vision going westbound on Kensington when you make a uh, you make that turn. Wait, well, refresh my memory. I know where you're talking about. Okay, we took we took a recommend made a recommendation there. Correct, Chris? For there's the, the, they were supposed to do something with the planning board about that whole the whole valet parking thing, and uh, th there is that lingering issue of that of that bush that the it's, it'd be the most I guess it'd be the most eastbound bush that blocks vision when you make a a turn onto Kensington to get to the you know not to the, get to Main Street and all that other stuff. Right here. Uh, yeah, that push. Yeah, yeah, that that push. That push right there. Now that it's in full bloom, it's back in action as a really, really bad site of structure. Um, they were going to look into. It, it, was, it was. I thought. I think it was determined that that push did block line of sight, and that they were going to do something about it, and they haven't. I don't recall where we left off. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just, I'm just wondering where that so is. So we we took the approach of whether or not that's on the approved site plan, and we determined that it was on the approved site plan. It's part of the landscaping plan. So we couldn't take any action to remove it. Um, I brought it before the county for a discussion, and I I don't know where we left off. I'd have to review my notes. Okay. Well, I remember Shaken saying saying that if it is a problem, that we have being perfectly happy to re-landscape re that whole little patch of whatever. But he couldn't. I remember them saying that, so I don't know what, what it would take so, to get that done, because that's that's kind of a block. So just, um, just ask me to report on it next month or whatever, next time we meet, and we'll do some data gathering or uh, uh, fact-finding and figure out where we left off on that. Okay, Cindy, sure. if we could look into that. Okay. Any other old business? None being heard, we'll close the old business section. We will thank our department liaisons for attending with us this evening, and we'll move on to the site plans. Just as a reminder for the department liaisons um, that are with us this evening, there is no August meeting, so I'm sorry, there's no July meeting, so our next meeting is actually on August. Chris, my phone is back there. Is it August 1st or 2nd? 
August 2nd? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So with that, just a reminder, there's no July meeting. With that, we will move to site plans and have some conversations with Tom. Are we going in order of the agenda? So uh, I'm having, Tom, I'm having difficulty accessing the Amherst site. Having trouble getting to Amherst. Is that like a secret? The server's a secret handshake. Oh, well, no, it's not. Uh, well, can you pull it up on your phone? Maybe it's down. Dan, oh, I want you to pull up Amherst's website. Dang it. Why is it not working? I've been on this committee for 10 years. Okay. Just going to here, right? Clicking this. And it just. He got on a month before, right? So he says. No, he was a month before me, I think. Barry Weinstein. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I got yeah. So I can't pull up the file. I, can't. I brought the paper maps. I brought the paper maps. But all right. So maybe I'll, are you? Are you? Are you? Oh, now? Which one? Okay. Pull out two tables. Yeah, sure. 